friends, Amanda here from Faithfully Homemade. Today I am going to talk about six ways to teach alphabet letters and songs, or letters and sounds, excuse me. And um, there are a ton of different ways, obviously, that you can do it. So I really had to pare down my, my ways for this video so that I could just stick to six different ways. And I'm going to just show you six different ways that we've used that have seemed to be very helpful um, with my children. So the first way, let's get into the very first way, is to use songs. So I have two songs I'm going to share with you. And bear with me because my voice is my voice. and <laughs> it, um, But I'm, I'm not, you know, a singer. But I do do these songs with my kiddos, and they really do enjoy them, and it really has helped. So um, the first one is one that I just... I don't know if I found, I think I just kind of came up with it. And uh, what it is, is I'll show them the letter and then we'll, we'll start it that way and we'll sing it, you know, with the letter pic and maybe with pictures. What I'm using right here are some Play-Doh mats that I made. And um, so I'll hold it up and I'll start the song. So it'll go like this. A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. Cat, D for duck, E for elephant, F for fish, F, F, fish, G for goat, H for horse, I for igloo, I, I, igloo, J for jar, K for kangaroo, L for lion, line you get the idea so what you do basically is you just continue on with that tune for all of the letters now you can do it like I just showed you where you say you know a for apple B for ball but you can also do just the sound so you can do it like this a says a ah, ah, B says b b C says k, 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 k. D says d d E says a ah, uh, okay, you get the idea. We will do this song in the morning, like at the beginning of the day, every day before we, like first thing for school. And it is amazing how well they retain the sounds and the names of letters. So that is one song. Another song is, um, these are alphabet songs. These are in my, these are my alphabet chart. Well, not my alphabet. These are my phon part of my phonics charts. Set. I'll leave a link below where you can get any of the stuff that I talk about. My these or these if you're interested. But um, you can do this without these. But this song um, is to the tune The Farmer and the Dell. And so this one goes like this. The A says A. Ah, the A says A. Ah, apple Ant Alligator A says A. Ah. And you can, you know, switch out the pictures. But I just, I did my own pictures that go with it. Um, and so I have a chart, you know, for all of the different... Um, letters obviously for the song and the song just stays the same but the pictures change so for example you would do b the b says b the b says b ball bat butterfly the b says b the c says k the c says k cat car and caterpillar c says k now um the third uh word has to be a three syllable word so that's why, like, for this one, it's alligator and butterfly and caterpillar. So um, so that's why I did mine. I wrote mine out into charts. You can get these off my website if you're interested. But, yeah, so we do that song. Um, this other song we do, and you just need flashcards for this other song. Any kind of flashcards will do. I like these big ones that I laminated. Um, we use these also with uh, Play-Doh. We roll out Play-Doh on them. But, so that's the first way. The first way is with songs. Okay, my second way is to teach alphabet letters and sounds is with puzzles. Now, I'm gonna do a totally separate video of six ways to use puzzles for learning. I have so many fun uh, ways that we use puzzles. But um, for our purposes for this video, I'm just gonna show you an alphabet puzzle. This one is a Melissa and Doug puzzle. I have um, a couple of different alphabet puzzles actually of Melissa and Doug, but this one is um, a lot of fun and the reason I like it is because it has pictures in each um, 
spot that say the beginning sound and also has capital and lowercase letters. So obviously one way we do it is we take out all of the letters and then the children just have to match them up. Obviously just like you would do a puzzle and we would say D says D, D, capital D, lowercase D. And then we would say D for dog and D for duck. And we would, we would talk about that. So Okay, here's another Melissa and Doug alphabet puzzle, but this one is just capital letters. So what you can do here is obviously um, they can do the regular puzzle with their pieces. Okay, so this one is a chunky puzzle. So this one's great for younger children um, because if, if their fine motor is not uh, super great yet, this is great you know, for them to grab and um, place in the right spot using their fingers and it's just it's better than the other puzzle the pieces were like this they were smaller and so uh you would need um you know an older child maybe a three-year-old but a two-year-old could do this puzzle and anyways what you could do since this one is just capital letters is you could have them you could give them a flash card with a lowercase letter so I'm going to show you one of our flashcards here. This is one of our um, alphabet sticks. I have a whole bag of these alphabet sticks. We love to use these. You could give them one of these alphabet sticks, and then um, I'm going to give them the lowercase letter, and then they have to look on their puzzle and find the uppercase letter. So that's another way you can do it when you have a puzzle that's only one, where it's either only capitals or only lowercase. Another fun thing you can do with alphabet puzzles is you can say a sound, and then they have to find the letter so you can say n n and then they would have to find n or you could say a word now i would use a word that's not on the puzzle for a child who you're trying to see if they can um recognize the letter to the to the sound uh or you if for a child who's just learning you can use the picture that's on there so for example um there's a rabbit on here for r and so you could say rabbit rabbit can you find the letter that's for rabbit and then they would find the r but um if you're working with a child who already, you know, who will use that picture clue and you want to, you want to make it a little harder, you could say road, road. Could you find the letter that um, starts the word road and then they could find it. So there's so many different things you can do with puzzles. I'm not going to go into it too, too much in this video because I'm going to do a separate video about how to use puzzles um, for phonics and things like that. But this is one fun way we like to do it is to practice our alphabet with puzzles. Okay, the next way is probably the most obvious way, but it is with books. So I pulled out a um, bunch of our alphabet books here. And um, the one thing I want to say is when we use books, it drives me crazy that sometimes uh, authors will put pictures in the books with different sounds. Here's what I mean. Okay, so oh, for example, okay, so this one we really like, but... This is the Very Hungry Caterpillar's ABCs. And um, so A for ants, that's awesome. But now we got B for bird and C for caterpillar and D for dog. Now when you get to E, I would prefer that they would have E for uh, like elephant or something with a short vowel, but they have E for eagle. So when you're working with really young children, I like to teach the short vowel sounds first, um, then the long vowel sounds. So it does kind of drive me crazy that some alphabet books have the vowels. F uh, now this one, the I is for iguana, so that's good. That's a short vowel sound. Um, but uh, sometimes they do change like, okay, for example, O for owl. Now, we were trying to teach little kids that O says ah, uh, ah, uh, octopus, and then they throw in owl here because O-W is actually a diphthong. Um, so if you're a phonics teacher, it probably does drive you crazy as well. It drives me crazy that they throw in um, special sounds into little preschoolers alphabet books, but they do. So anyways, it's fine. Um, just keep that in mind when you are practicing your alphabet books. Okay, so um, I just have a few examples here. This one, I have to thank my sister-in-law for. She got it for one of my kids for Christmas, and I absolutely love this book. I don't know where she got it, but it is amazing. And the reason I say that is because it's tactile. Like, they can trace it with their finger to practice um, how to make the each letter. And then when they say the sound like D is for D, D dog, they also have a flap here. They can open up and see that D is also for duck. And so I just absolutely love this one. F is for frog, f f frog. It's also for fish and they can do their finger on it. So um, 
Yeah, I, I love this one. It's it's awesome. It's tactile. It's great for uh, when you're doing hand handwriting penmanship. So, anyways, I wonder where I don't. I'll have to ask my sister-in-law where she got this one. But I do love it. And, and I did just notice though, it does have eye for ice cream. I'd rather it be like eye for igloo or iguana. But oh, there's igloo. Igloo is in there. So it's got the short sound. I ice cream is a long sound. But anyways, besides that, I really do love this one. Oh, for octopus. And see, orange, not orange is not a short sound, but that's okay. All right, anyways, so sometimes they do mess around with the vowels and they'll put both sounds in there. So, okay, that's another one. And then, so obviously, now sometimes when we read our alphabet books, we will combine this with our songs. So for example, um, when I'm reading this one to my two-year-old, I will do this something like this. A for ants, B for bees, C for cat, k, k, cat, D for dog, and it's not opening. Ah, E for elephant, F for fish. So anyways, I will go through and use what it says, but I'll put it into the song. And so uh, there's a way to combine two of our different ways. Here's another alphabet book I have. I like this one, it's a lift the flap. So we use this, and we lift the flaps on this one. And this one's actually great for older kids because they can, there's just activities in here that they can do with the different letters and stuff like that. So um, we like that one. And then this one, my um, two-year-old's really been getting into the alphabet picture book. And yeah, I like this one too. So it just looks like this. So anyways, yeah. Okay, so the next, that way is to, the third way is to use books. All right, the next way is to use flashcards and charts. So this is, we are on way four. Yes, <laughs> I'm getting mixed up. Okay, this is way four. Way four is to use flashcards and charts. So these are our flashcards, basically. We use um, my alphabet sticks as flashcards, and we also use my... Um, my large Play-Doh mats as flashcards as well that I showed you earlier. So anyways, um, so when you use flashcards, obviously you can just flash the card and ask the child what letter it is, what sound it makes, um, and what the picture clue is for the word. So now, some people say that they don't like teaching the sounds and the names of the letters at the same time, but I always do, and here's why. Um, if your child is confused, if they say, well, this is A, and then you say, what sound does it make? It says A. Ah. If you don't want to teach, if some people say don't teach both of them at the same time. Oops, excuse me. But if your child's confused, just say that it's like an animal. Your children know that um, this is a dog, and dogs say ruff, 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 or woof, woof, right? Or this is a cat, and cats say meow. You can just tell the ch children that, well, the letters... Um, they have a name, but they also have a sound, just like a dog has a name, but he also makes a sound. So uh, C, this is the letter C, and it also says k, -k for cat, okay? Um, so that's why I always, I've never had one of my children get confused by letters and sounds. Some maybe, maybe some children do, but I've never had that happen. If you, t if you tell them that, that it's just like an animal. An animal has a name and an animal makes a sound. A cow says, it's a cow, that's his name, but he also says moo, okay? So anyways, um, all right, so these are our flashcards. And what we like to do is I, I put them on these sticks. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen these before. And we love to put them in Play-Doh like this so that they stick up and you can kind of use them and manipulate manipulate them. But if you have regular flashcards, you can just do this. Lay your flashcards out on your table. And um, what you do is is you can mix them up like I did here and then you can have the child order them so a b c d okay so they can put them in order you can you can even do the songs with them a for a, a b for b, b, whatever and then you can also um, have them practice matching lowercase letters so if you have lowercase uh, magnetic letters or I have my puzzle pieces here that I showed you earlier when we were doing puzzles um, then you can have them take the lowercase letters and match them up on next to these uppercase letters. So, for example, so for example here, I have matched up my lowercase letters. So they would just find the lowercase letters and match them up. And then you could practice the sounds of, of each of the letters. A for apple, B for bird, C for cat, C for cat, 
D for dog, and so on. Um, also, on the back of my sticks, I have the lowercase letters. So we can practice turning them and talking about uppercase and lowercase sounds and letters. So um, using flashcards is a lot of fun. Um, you can obviously do that just right with regular flashcards on the table, but using these um, in the sticks is one of our favorite ways um and so also like i said in the mornings we will flash these cards and we will talk about letters and sounds that way and then let me show you how we use charts okay so using flashcards and charts um here is an alphabet chart that i have i'm sure lots of you have alphabet charts if you don't uh you can get this one off my website i'll leave a link below but um, what you can do is you can obviously use this. You can, you can say the sounds each day and talk about the, um, letters and then you can pair it up with manipulatives. Here I just have just some blocks and what you can do is you can say, can you find the V, 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 V for vase, or you can give them whatever clue you want and then they have to cover it up. So you can say, can you find the L for lamp? And so I'm saying a different pick word uh, clue then is on there. So here they have lion, but I said lamp, so they would have to find the L. And you could say, can you find the um, word, the letter, excuse me, that starts the word flower? And then they would have to cover up the F, even though the picture clue on, on the chart is a fish. If you're interested in more um, ideas on how to use charts, I made another video, whew, probably year, at least a year ago, if not two years ago, on how I used uh, charts. And I will leave a link below to that old video. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll leave a link below and you can go ahead and watch that old video. But yes, we, so we use charts and we use flashcards to practice the alphabet. Okay, we are on to way number five. Okay, way number four to practice alphabet letters and sounds is with activities. So I have here two plastic bins where I keep um, our alphabet activities. And I'm going to open this one up and just kind of show you. Um, I keep them in these plastic bags and they're all ready to go with, and they're marked, you know, what they are. As you can see here, they're just different activity centers. Here's this one. Then let me show you this other bin. I keep these ones in here. We do so many different learning activities. You can see this one is filled. These are all activities that I have made myself. They're on my website. I will leave a link below. I'm just going to pull out like maybe two of them and show you how they work so you can get an idea um, of how we use them. But I wanted to show you where I, I store our, all of our activities in bins. Okay, so one of the activities I pulled out to show you is called Sound Flipping Cover. And it has these different mats with different pictures on them. And then it has alphabet cards that go with each one. So what you do is you put some of the cards upside down on the mat. And then um, the child will flip over a card because it's called Flipping Cover. And they will look at the letter. That is the letter U. And they have to think U says uh, uh, uh. Then they use any kind of uh, manipulative you have. Here I'm going to use these blocks again just because I have them out. And they have to cover up a picture that begins with the letter U. So they're going to cover up umbrella. And then they can go on. Or you could have them cover up all the pictures on the mat that begin with U. So we have umbrella. And we have... And we have... Um, no other ones that begin with you. So we're going to flip over our car. Now we have T. Find a picture that begins with T. So I see a turtle. So the child will cover up turtle. Okay, or they could have covered up top because there was top on there and there's also taco. So there were three for T. And then they would flip over the next card. And here I have S. So I'm going to cover up pictures that begin with S. We have sun. You get the idea. We have soap. So the child is just going to continue on like that until all the pictures on their mat are covered up. So there's a couple of different mats. And then there's different letters. Oops. Different letters that you would use for each of the different mats. So that's one activity. I'm just going to show you one more. There are a million different ones I have here. Um, I'll try to leave links below to other ones. So you can you can take a look at them on my website and, and see but I'll show you another one real quick. Okay, this next one is a puzzle match, and I like to um, give them about three choices at a time. Depends on the child that you're using, or child that you're teaching and, and what their ability level is. And so what they're going to do is they're just going to match up sounds. So here I have a goat, so the G is going to go 
goat, and then I have a hamburger, and then I have a fish. So they're gonna make their um, pencils. And then what I also like to do after that is I like to have them use their magnetic letters. You can see here I have my magnetic letters. And then I like to have them match up the lowercase and the uppercase letters. So this would be a good idea to do on a uh, magnetic surface like a cookie sheet because then the letters will stick. But what they do is they basically just take their letters then and they just match them up. It kind of makes it into a Montessori type matching activity and then you can talk about uppercase and lowercase letters as well and you've just done the sounds and so on so that is another uh one of my activities so way number five is to do activities we are almost on way number six here we go Okay, my final way, um, there are many other ways I could go on forever in this video, but way number six is with games. We practice our alphabet with games. So this first game we use um, alphabet bean bags and what we do is I just take these and we toss them to each other and then we say the letter and we say the, the sound. Uh oh, my two year old just knocked something over. Um, and so anyway, so I will like take the D and I will toss it to him and then he will say D. D says D, D and I'll say what's the picture clue and he might say dog or duck. Um, so this game is a lot of fun. So if you have uh, alphabet bean bags, they're a lot of fun. You can make your own too if you just have some, fa <laughs> some fabric. He's knocking over my stuff. What are you doing over there? Yeah? Are you knocking stuff over? Um, and so if you just have some fabric and you throw some beans in there and then if you can sew, you can make your own. Otherwise, these ones I got um, from, where did I get these? I don't know. If I remember, I will leave a link below. Uh, I got these a long time ago. But anyway, we'll sit like and across from each other and we'll toss them back and forth and we'll say sounds. We also use these to make words and stuff when the kids get older. So anyways, so that's one game that we do and then I'll show you another game. So another game we do is we'll throw alphabet cards into a pile and then um, these are, are just alphabet sticks, but we'll throw them into a pile and then I'll have them uh, have the children grab one and then uh, we'll play like a go fish type thing. So they'll grab um, the letter or they'll grab a stick and then they'll say WW says wagon, wo wo wagon. Then the next person will grab one and we'll kind of go around and we'll each say the sounds. And then by the time we have like a couple of them, then um, we will try to play like a goldfish. So we'll say, do you have the letter P, P for penguin? And if we, ha if I have it, I'll give it to them. If I don't, then they have to go fish and they have to grab another letter. And when they grab it, um, we'll say sounds and we'll say the picture name. I know that that kind of defeats the purpose because then they know what letters everybody has in their hand. But it, it works for my little kids because they don't really, you know, when they're really, really little, they're just practicing the sounds and they don't really understand. If they're older, I guess I wouldn't have them say the sound when they pick it up because you don't want them to know what's in your hand. But anyway, you know how to play go. You know how to play go fish. So that's the last way. The last way is we play go fish and we put them in a pile. You can obviously buy alphabet games um, as well from like different stores and stuff like that. So that is my last way is to play alphabet games. All right, guys, if you made it all the way through this video to the end, um, thank you so much for watching. So this was six ways to practice alphabet letters and sounds. There's lots of other ways to do it. If you have other ideas, leave them in the links below. Another idea I have, we, my kids do like to watch um, alphabet videos and so uh that's another one but anyway i shouldn't have even said it because i was only going to do six ways okay so uh, i hope you are enjoying this new series of mine this new uh six ways to do something learning wise and this is my second video in the series and we'll see you next time guys bye